Hello and welcome to Rotary Rocketry. Today we are going to be making a simple, easy to build ripstop nylon parachute. Now before we begin, I want to point out that the parachute we're going to be building today is a simpler, lighter duty version of another parachute design that we already have on our channel. The main difference between the two is how the shroud lines are attached to the fabric. This one is a very simple, easy design. In our other parachute design, it's stronger, but it is more complicated and more time consuming to build. So if you need a parachute for a larger, heavier rocket, I would recommend the other design because it's stronger. I'll put a link down in the description and there'll be a link on the screen at the end of this video if you want to take a look at that other design. The design we're going to build today, we've actually been launching for the last couple of launches in our three inch rocket. Now this weighs about a thousand grams fully loaded with the motor and we'll be building a 36 inch parachute but if you want to scale this down to something smaller or even scale it up to something a little bit bigger I'll give you all the math you need as we build it to make whatever size parachute that you want. Now we're going to need two components to make this parachute. The first one is ripstop nylon fabric. Now this comes in different thicknesses. The thickness is denoted in something called denier. This is 70 denier. I like this because it's good and strong, but it also folds up very nicely. If you buy one with a higher denier number, that will be a thicker fabric. A smaller denier number will be a thinner fabric. And then the other thing we need is paracord. Now this is a very small diameter paracord. This is sometimes called 275 paracord. It's 3 30 seconds of an inch or 2.4 millimeters in diameter. I've started out by cutting out a piece of the ripstop nylon fabric. Now because we're making a 36 inch parachute, this is 36 inches by 36 inches. Now we're going to be making an eight sided parachute, so we need to cut off the four corners. So here's some quick math of what you need to do to calculate what needs to be measured and cut off. You take the width of the parachute fabric. For me, that's 36 inches. Now, you could use inches or centimeters, it doesn't matter. Divide that number by 4.83. For my parachute, that comes out to 7.45 inches, which is approximately 7 and 7 sixteenths of an inch. If you're using metric, just round off to the nearest millimeter. Whatever the calculation comes out to for your size parachute, write that number down. We're gonna need it in just a moment. Now, I'm on the edge of the fabric. I'm gonna make a mark at the halfway point and then I'm going to measure over to one side from that mark seven and seven sixteenths of an inch. If you did a different size parachute and your calculation earlier was a different number, you use whatever number you came up with for that calculation. But for a 36 inch parachute, it's seven and seven sixteenths of an inch. And then I'll measure over from the center to the other direction the same amount, seven and seven sixteenths of an inch. And then I'll repeat that on the other three sides. Now that I've marked all those points, we'll come down to a corner and follow this up and find that first mark here. Follow this up and find the first mark here. Use a straight edge and draw a line between those two points. And I'll repeat that on the other three corners. Now that I've got all four corners marked, we're ready to cut those off. But before we cut it, now is a good time to double check your measurements. So if we measure along an edge from one line to the other, you see that I've got 14 and 7 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to go around and make sure that all the lines I've drawn and all the edges are 14 and 7 eighths. Now it may be plus or minus a sixteenth of an inch or plus or minus a couple of millimeters, that's okay. But if they're significantly different, you may have made a calculation error with that math calculation we did earlier, or you just measured something wrong. Go back, redo the math, and remeasure your corners. But I've measured all these, and they're just fine, and we're ready to cut those off. Now we have our eight-sided parachute shape. Now we're going to use four shroud lines on this, and each line will go from one corner and connect to the opposite corner. So we need to make some marks on here to show where the shroud lines are going to be attached. I'm going to use a straight edge to just connect from one corner to the opposite. 
and then I'll draw a little line going from the corner up at least three inches. We're going to come back to that line in just a few minutes. And then another one over here. And then I'll mark this with a one and a one. That way when we connect the shroud line, we know that one line connects from this point to this point. So the next set, we'll do the same thing. Mark our line coming up, a couple of inches here and here, and this will be two and two. We'll do that two more times. So I've got four sets of lines, one, two, three, and four. Now we're gonna come down to one of these corners and measure up from the corner and put a little line at three inches. This is the three inches where the shroud line is gonna be attached to the fabric. I'll repeat that on all eight corners. We're done preparing the fabric. It's time to cut the shroud lines. Now it's important on this type of parachute that the shroud lines aren't too long and it's important that they're not too short. This is not a shaped dome parachute. This is just a flat piece of fabric. So if the shroud lines are too long, the fabric will open up too far and it'll be flatter than it should be. And that won't be very stable as the parachute is coming down. If the shroud lines are too short, it'll hold the parachute corners tighter together and the parachute won't be as efficient as it should be. My general rule on shroud lines for this type of parachute is 1.25 times the width of the parachute fabric. So for this one, it's 36 inches. So 36 times 1.25 is 45 inches. Now we're gonna have four shroud lines mounted to the eight mounting points on the parachute. So we're gonna have one end come up 45 inches to the central mounting point and then back down 45 inches to the opposite corner. So that's 45 plus 45 is 90. And then we're also gonna add another eight inches. And I'll show you in just a moment what that eight inches is for. So my shroud lines are gonna be 98 inches. Now, if you're doing a different size parachute, you'll need to do that math calculation for your size. Width of the parachute times 1.25. Take that answer and double it and add eight inches. Let me show you what the extra eight inches is for. So we have that line on our parachute corners that's a total of three inches long. That's where the shroud line is gonna be attached. So it's gonna be three inches of the shroud line used up on this end of the shroud line. And then on the other end, it'll also be using up three inches to mount to the opposite corner. So that's a total of six inches of extra shroud line that we need. And then in the center of each shroud line, we're gonna tie a loop like that, so that we'll be able to mount all the shroud lines to a central mounting point. And we're allowing for two inch extra for this. So three inches mounting, three inches mounting, plus two inches extra for the loop, gives us a total of eight inches extra length needed for the shroud line. I've got the four lines cut out. Now before we go any further, I'm gonna make a mark at the center of each of the lines. So just put the ends together and find the center. Now, if you've got a black paracord, this is a little tricky. I have a sparkly marker that makes marks on black cord. This would be a lot easier if this was white or a colored cord, you could just use a black marker. Now we're gonna be taking the center cores out of all of the shroud lines. When we do that, the shroud lines will be a little springy, kind of like rubber bands. And that's going to make it a little more difficult to find that center mark if we don't make it now. So we want to mark them all first before we take the center cores out. Now we're ready to take the center cores out. If we just push back on the outer sheath, you'll see that reveals those cores. And we can just pull all those out of each one of our shroud lines. Now you might be thinking that taking that center core out is gonna make this weaker. Now it does reduce the strength of the cord, but it is still very strong. And without that center cord in there, it's gonna make it a lot easier to sew this down onto the fabric. Now we need to tie a loop in the center of each one of the shroud lines. There's that little mark that we made at the midpoint. So we're just gonna tie a little loop in that shroud line. And then you can use 
either a pen or a pencil or a dowel just to go through there just so you get the loophole about the same size for all of your loops and we want that center mark to be right at the top of the loop. Now we're ready to sew the shroud lines onto the fabric. Now you can sew the shroud lines onto the outside edge of the parachute or you could sew the shroud lines onto the inside edge of the parachute. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the parachute at all. I think for consistency and looks, it's a little bit better to sew them onto the inside edge of the fabric. Okay, so we've got the first shroud line attached on both ends. Now, as we put on the rest of the shroud lines from here on out, we need to make sure that the new shroud lines aren't tangled or twisted with the shroud lines that are already installed. If you sew down both ends of a shroud line and it's twisted around another one, you won't be able to untangle it later. So watch for that as you go. So this is mounted from number one to number one. The next shroud line we're gonna install is gonna go from number two to number two, and we'll do three and four as well. So here's the final stitch work. Three inches of the cord stitched it down to the fabric. We did a straight stitch down the center of the cord. I would recommend a straight stitch instead of a zigzag in this situation. Now you could hand stitch this if that's all you have available, but the sewing machine does do a better job. And since my wife is an excellent seamstress, the sewing machine was the best choice here. Now that the sewing's all done, we just need to bring the shroud lines down to one central location. I like to use these little openable chain links. You just hook the loops onto that, and then later, when we're assembling this into the rocket, we'll bring a line down from the nose cone connected to this, and then the shock cord or the recovery cord mounted down in the rocket also gets mounted to this. Now in the next video, we're gonna talk about the shock cord or the recovery cord. That's the cord that goes from the shroud lines down and mounts inside the rocket. It's okay to have the recovery cord too long. It's not okay to have the recovery cord too short. And in the next video, I'm going to give you an easy way to calculate the minimum length for the shot cord. And we're going to end this video with a beautiful shot of one of our rockets coming down on this new parachute. If you like what we're doing, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button as well. Both of those really help our channel out a lot. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.